Podcast. We demystify what goes on behind the therapy room door. Join us on this voyage of discovery and co-creative conversations. This is The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors podcast with Bob Cook and Jackie Jones. Welcome back to the next episode of The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors. And we're going to talk a little bit about how can therapy help with relationships this week. Fantastic title. One of my most favourite titles you've come up with. Favourite titles. What? What's? What? Why, Bob? Why this one? Because I, I firmly believe the most important relationship we need to adhere to is the relationship with ourselves. Oh, that's that's nice. Which I, I think book, that's overlooked a lot of the time. I wrote a book called that. Did you? The book called the most important relationship. And uh, it was privately sold, so I don't, it was 1986 or something like that. Yeah, I've written a very, uh, did it go cosmopolitan? I'm not sure, but it was a very well-received article talking about the most important relationship is the relationship with yourself. I'm a firm, firm believer that's what therapy is about. So we have to start there, surely. Surely yes. we have to start there, because you see, everything that's happening internally between ourselves and TA has a very good model of looking at this. This has a very good model of personality looking at the three parts of the ego, which in TA is called parent, adult and child. That's a very good model for understanding uh, ourselves. And unless we really put ourselves first, the relationship with ourselves first, then we'll act out or we'll communicate with people externally in a way perhaps uh, which isn't effective because we haven't actually dealt with the relationship within ourselves. Interesting. So that's where I come from as a therapist and I always have. And that is that as we deal with our own hurts and the communication and transactions between the different parts of ourselves, we will then be able to um, externally more be effective to other people. Yeah, for, for, for some people, when I talk about, you know, we compartmentalise and we put things in boxes and, you know, separate out. And I don't want to say I have different personalities, but sometimes clients can misunderstand what I mean by that, that, you know, they think they've got multiple personality disorder or the split personality and all these sorts of things. And it's like, well, no, we, I, I'm quite happy with the fact that I'm a different person in different places and with different people there are different facets to me I'm not a cardboard cutout that's two-dimensional and that's how I see the relationship with myself the different parts of me absolutely and if you're not kind with yourself you won't be kind with other people mm. if you don't respect yourself you won't respect other people if you don't talk to yourself nicely, you won't talk nicely to other people. Self-care can be seen as quite selfish, though, and self-centred by a lot of people. Might even be seen as self-indulgent. Yeah. But, but I, I quite like the word self-care. Me too. I changed, I changed the word self-indulgent to self-care or being aware of yourself. Because unless you're aware of yourself and what's happening in terms of the narrative and how you talk to yourself, you'll not be aware of how you can have more effective communication with other people. Mm. Yeah, and I, I see, you know, self-care, people say it's selfish. I always say it's not, it's selfless. We, we need to prioritise ourselves because, you know, there's a reason why we're told to put our oxygen mask on first before we help anybody else. Yeah, because... If we treat ourselves in unkind ways, we will be like that to other people. Mm. So the people, the person that we need to change first is ourself. Yeah. Absolutely. And, then, and it's, it's the completely the wrong way around. In, in other words, if we just concentrate on external communication at the expense of leaving out internal communication, 
things won't be as effective as we wish them to be. So yeah. couples therapy, for example, if you go to a good couples therapist, they won't just concentrate on how you talk to each other. They'll talk, for, first of all, I hope, how you talk to yourself. Or how the two parental systems interlock. So as a, as a couples therapist, in terms of, you know, say, say somebody came to me and said that they wanted to, um, ha, uh, communication had broken down and they wanted to restore communication in an effective way between the two of themselves. Right. Probably one of the first things I'd be looking at is how their two frames of reference interlock or don't. And a really good question to say is, right, if you're if their parents are alive or even if they're dead anyway, but if you put them in the same room together, would they get on? Because it's the communication that you have internally about yourself, other people in the world that is the basis for any relationships with anyone else. And the number one place, actually, Jackie, where relationships start to go around, well, not number one, perhaps number two, uh, is when, uh, of course, the couple have, par have kids and their styles of parenting are completely opposite. Yeah. And that's because they both have had parents which have had different parenting styles and they've internalised different ways of parenting and then they start arguing. Yeah, so uh, that is something that I've discussed, you know, at length at certain times in the therapy room is, is about, you know, how how we or can we compromise with certain things if, you know, if we're both bringing our own upbringing and our past experience and the way that we were parented into the room, is there a compromise or are we on completely different pages with how we parent? Absolutely. That's one of the major topics in therapy, I, I would uh, imagine yeah and I, I you know whether it's right or wrong but I always say that you know there's this middle of the road parenting which I think is what we should aim for because there's overindulgence on one end and neglect on the other and you know either one of those no. extremes are just as damaging to the child absolutely so I think going to yourself and looking at how you talk to yourself and the narrative you talk to yourself about and whether you're kind to yourself and love yourself and uh, can uh, give warmth to that child inside yourself is the fruits for effective communication with others. Yeah. Whatever relationship. Yeah, yeah, totally agree. And being, you know, being conscious of the words that we use, I think, are quite a good, you know, I don't know, barometer of where, where our thoughts are. You know, if we're saying things like, I need to do this, I should do that, all, all those sort of things, which ego state we're in. And, you know, a lot of the internal dialogue that we have can be quite negative. And it is quite, you know, fr coming from the critical parent a lot of the time. Yeah, I mean, I, I am responsible for nearly all the assessments at the institute where I work at. And when people come in and uh, get assessed for therapy, one of the questions I always ask them, almost every person, is are they hard on themselves? Mm. And invariably they say yes. Now, if that's the case, they're going to be hard on other people. Mm. So relationships are therefore, from that stance, stance are problematic from the beginning. So is it again just you know shining a light on that and you know bringing it into our awareness the the you know the the way that we talk to ourselves that's is that the starting really point big, yeah i think that's a one really big area to look at in terms of how we can um be more effective in communication if we're more effective in communication with ourselves it's a really big area isn't it Yes, yeah, yeah. And again, I, I suppose being honest and truthful with ourselves and our thoughts and our processes as well. Absolutely. And there's a difference between... Um, well, let's put it another way around. You know, what I think the ideal for people, 
couples in relationships and in relationships per se is interdependence, not dependence or codependence. It's where both both parts of the, uh, the couple can uh, get their own needs met. And so it's interdependence. Yeah. So you have to be aware of your own needs. Uh, yeah, see, I it, sometimes when I have worked with couples, there's there's been an interesting conversation that's gone on because I, I suppose one of the first things that I kind of broach with them is that we can't change another person. That we we can't make somebody else behave in a certain way or or do anything. So you know, really, the only person that we can work on is ourselves in that relationship. Well, and they say, well, he's the one that's causing all the problems. <laughs> and what do you say back to that? Well, if if you know both parties are invested in the couple therapy and both parties are working on themselves, then ultimately things will change. I think, I think, you see, you are right technically. You are right, obviously. Good, I like to be right no, technically. No one, no one, you know, like no one can make somebody do something. I, 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 no, I'm with you, obviously, on that. However, or stroke and, people do have impacts on people. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I think that's, that is important to bring into the equation. So you well, are right. Is it, I would... Make, yeah yeah one of the conversations i have an awful lot is that is it our thoughts about what the other person has done that creates our feeling good question that's a very good question David. and that's the conversation that i have a lot of the time you know that maybe what the, the the partner is doing isn't fair on me and I don't deserve it and how can they do that because that means that they don't love me and 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 well, all these thoughts around it are often what well 100% I believe what caused the impact well that's usually and of course probably goes in with your thinking but mostly of course you know we are projecting parts of ourselves onto the other person so if we look towards ourselves and the resolution ourselves, yeah, then we're onto a winning ticket rather than always blaming the other. Yeah. Which I think, you know, particularly if we're talking about couples, happens an awful, awful lot is, well, if they didn't behave that way, I wouldn't react the way that I do. And it's kind of looking externally for reasons for our happiness, sadness, whatever it is, rather than looking internally. Yeah, absolutely. And if you widen this out to, and I know you, you, you wanted to do this, so I, I, I'm i going to do it. If we widen this out to relationships per se, I think, especially for people who perhaps don't know this model, listen to us, I think the model of transaction analysis is a very interesting model to look at. And Eric Byrne, who is the originator of TA, had a the whole theory of communication uh, where he analysed transactions and talked about how people com could come from different parts of themselves to to check to help change the course of uh, communication so you've got more effective communication. So yeah. I, I would suggest TA books, some of the early very simple TA books, um, would be a good place to look at. Uh, because Eric Byrne talked about three separate separate types of transactions in effective communication, adult to adult comp and complementary transactions, ulterior transactions. So that's a good place to look at. And a lot of problems in communication generally is when people think they're coming from one part of themselves, but they actually aren't. They're coming from another part of themselves. Um, and as a therapist, I always look towards people um, attempting to come from an I'm okay, you're okay position and coming from an adult to adult position. So um, TAA has a lot to offer here, I think. Yeah, yeah. And I, th I think it, it's a model that on the surface is quite easy to understand, but I, I can remember 
when somebody first asked me when I was starting, I think it was on the TA 101 that, that you did, you know, how much are you in your adult? And I said all the time. And it, it's, <laughs> that was my immediate reaction. I'm, I am an adult. I'm in my 40s. Why would I not be in my adult all the time? But it, it's when we, we unpack that and yeah, that I realised is probably a lot of the time I'm not in my adults. And I think, you know, let's just take some stressful situations, which might be an example of what we're talking about here. Let's pick going to an interview. So I've said that because I think most people listening to this probably have gone to an interview. At some point, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And usually interviews for most people are quite stressful. Yeah. And they may prepare and rehearse and goodness knows what. And hopefully they may get the interview. I was thinking particularly about actors and actresses here who go through thousands of auditions and uh, et cetera, et cetera. But anyway, so uh, what happens in a lot of interviews uh, is they go to the interview thinking they're coming from the age they are, of 42 or whatever it is, but actually are coming from a much younger self. Mm. And they project onto the person on the other side of the interview, their mother, their father, their critical parent, whoever it is. So they end up doing the interview from a position which doesn't help them. Yeah. And often can be a breakdown in communication. So when a person is coming from their younger self, often in, in, in communication, um, things don't work out as they want them to because they're not being in the here and now to use their the effective resources they've got yes yeah to enable them to uh, illustrate their potential yeah they're stuck in some sort of scared place or wherever it is in the past relationships are perfect Go, going back to relationships when uh, people project on their onto the other their parent or their critical abuser or whatever it is and come from a, a scared, compliant, over adapted place. And the relationship is then more parent child driven than adult to adult. That's the TA language speak. Yeah, yeah. And you, that that parent child transaction can be complementary. It can be that way for quite a long time you know again with with couples that I've seen in therapy you know we've spoken about it and one does take on the parenting role a lot of the time and the other one is quite comfortable in the child ego state because they're allowed to be in the free child a lot of the time because the other one's taking control of everything and it's usually representative of their history either what's the, either what the child has watched in terms of the parent and, and so sorry, in terms of the mother and father drama they're watching in front of them or one they played out. Yeah. Now those types of relationships you talk about, if they're usually that way, child to parent driven, they usually break down sometime or the other. And that, that's because uh there's not really a relationship that's happening in present time it's from uh, two different parts of the self so the other parts of the self are not used so the child for example if they get stuck in the younger child isn't using the adult resources of the that they've got uh, and if somebody's just stuck in parent they're not they don't have access all to to the freer child or whatever it is. Yeah. There's yeah. a model, I think, to look at um, how communication can break down and what to do about it, which is usually getting back into adults somehow. Yes, yeah, yeah. I know, if, I, for, for anybody that's listening to this that wants to know more, your YouTube channel has some really good yeah videos on there around parent adult and child and some of the you know i wanted to say the basic ta 
yes, it has. things, but I think it's more in depth as well. It's not just basic stuff. Yeah. There are some some quite in depth things on there that people can go and maybe have a look at. Yeah, and if you want to put things even wider contexts, you can look at societies and cultures and think: Well, are they parent driven cultures or are they child driven cultures, for example? Yeah. So TA is a good model to look at communication. I think generally. Yeah. And you know, we can get into adult frames rather than being stuck in an archaic past or some parental future and it's it's often about awareness and us understanding when we are in these different places mm -hmm. the different ego states and you know at certain times you know if if we're feeling unwell if we're tired if we're overwhelmed we're not always going to be open to being in the adult <laughs> No, you know, sometimes we want to be looked after, so we will go into it, our younger self. Yeah, and that's okay. The problem isn't that, Jackie. The problem is when a person gets stuck in that place. Yeah. Not that they don't go into them. I can, I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy to regress to a four year old to be looked after. <laughs> Me <by> too. <laughs> but it's, that's not the problem. The problem is if we get stuck in that place. Yeah, yeah. That's the problem. Yeah, and I, th I think some people, when, when I talk about ego states, they kind of have a misunderstanding that I'm talking about them being childish in uh, the relationship. And it's it's not that. It, it's how I explain that, you know, that isn't what it means to be in your child ego state. No, no. Yeah. So it's a very good model. And I think that, um, in fact, I think it's one of the best models to look at how you to understand how communication may go wrong yeah me too i the, i i think i've said it in quite a few of these podcasts that i love transactional analysis because there's pretty much a diagram for everything and well, it, certainly in this I yeah mean, that's a really good diagram to look at how communication goes wrong it's often called the drama triangle yes where you have and they're not real roles they're psychological roles it's a triangle where you have a persecutor rescue and victim and, uh, and um, looking at how people fall into these psychological roles and and as they do of course communication will break down and of course um, therapists will help you um, get off that drama triangle if you like and come from a more adult place yeah which I think is a, is a wonderful, you know, ending to this podcast episode when you're talking about the drama triangle and, you know, what you were saying about our relationship with ourself at the beginning. Yes, yeah. It's kind of gone full circle, really, how, how we see ourselves, how we talk to ourselves. Do we talk to ourselves with a victim mentality or a rescuer and those yeah. sort of things? Yeah. yeah. And how we can get off that triangle and yeah. treat ourselves in an okay way. Yeah. Thank you so much, Bob. Great, great. And what's the next uh, podcast? And, um, I don't honestly know. It will be a surprise. We've got a, we've got a long list to cover. We have a long list. So we've... I'm sure if you had that list in front of you, uh, mm -hmm. you would be able to entice our listeners. I uh, would be able to do. But, uh, but uh, anyway. I look forward to talk about whatever it is and uh, that'll be fun. Yeah. Okay, doc. Thank you so much, Bob. I'll speak to you soon. You're welcome. Take care. Take care. Bye. You've been listening to The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. We'll be back next week with another episode.